Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Right now is where we discuss the big issue, the next big issue on our agenda. And now, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, intercepted 21.9 kilograms of cocaine at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport Command, Abuja, on Monday. The illicit substance was concealed in two suitcases, and it's the largest single seizure by the command. This came after the agency renewed its plans to clamp down on drug traffickers and dealers of illicit substances in the country. The new chairman and chief executive of the NDLEA, retired Brigadier General Buba Mawa, said that over 15 million Nigerians between the ages of 15 and 64 abuse illicit drugs, and this is three times the global estimate. Let's take a listen. I would like to today want those who engage in the dastardly trade of importation, exports, cultivation, processing, manufacture, trafficking, sale, and consumption of illicit substances to stop forthwith. Or they should be prepared to contend with NDLEA. And that's the new chairman of the NDLEA, you know, talking about how bad this issue is. We have a guest at GK Trude, he's a social uh, affairs commentator. He'll be joining us in just a minute. But, um, Sarugi, this issue really, we've been talking about this for years and years and years. And the NDLEA seem to have been doing, you know, what they, what they can, their best, so to speak. But what really strikes me about this discovery of, you know, the two suitcases at the airport was that... The suitcases had arrived in Nigeria, the Abuja airport, from mm -hmm. uh, Ethiopia. And the, the suitcases were unaccompanied. The two suitcases were there. They noticed it was there for about two days before they decided to check, and they saw that it was filled with illicit drugs. I mean, if someone had claimed, come, you know, the day the flight landed, to pick up those drugs, to pick up those suitcases, we can imagine just how many youth you know, would have that substance in their, in their houses or in their possession at the moment. Doesn't this scare you? Well, I don't think the drugs were forgotten on, you know, um, you know, because somebody, you know, slept off. Um, I think, you know, they realized that they had gotten into, or the drugs had gotten into uh, the airport in a, you know, in a way that they wouldn't be able to pick them up without being caught, and so they abandoned them. You know, that, that's, mm -hmm. you know, very likely what happened. They were there for about a week before it was finally opened up um, and uh, they discovered drugs in them. Um, but, you know, about the drugs, you know, issue in Nigeria, we speak about it, but we don't, I don't think we have accepted that we do have a problem in Nigeria. You know, most times drug conversations only come up when Nigerians are arrested in Malaysia or in Indonesia. Um, but the drug abuse problem in, in, in Nigeria has been a big problem for many, many years. Northern Nigeria, people have done numerous reports on how bad it is in the yes. north. Um, and so we, we have, there's many, many, you know, loopholes and angles to this that um, we would have to be addressing one after the other. How do they get into the country? Um, how much work does the NDLEA need to still do? Is Nigeria a transit route for drugs? You it know, is. why are drugs coming from Ethiopia to Nigeria? Where are the drugs headed? You know, so there's, there's numerous angles to this. What more, you know, does the NDLEA need to do? Uh, what new laws need to come into play, you know, be, you know, so that we can sort out the problems that we have? And it's yes. not just cocaine now. We're talking heroin, mar marijuana, even uh, Tramadol, yes. um, um, the cough syrup, don't remember the name now. Codeine. Codeine. So there's numerous issues of drug abuse in Nigeria. Mm. Um, and it's a conversation that we need to take seriously. But I don't think that the, the government understands that we have a drug problem yet or accepts that we have a drug problem yet. Well, then yet. Let's, uh, let's give us a sense of just how bad this issue is. We have now joining us Achike Chude via uh, telephone line. Good morning, Mr. Chude. Mr. Chude, can you hear us? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. So we've, we've been discussing this issue. We just played the, the clip from uh, the new NDLEA chairman talking about, you know, saying 15 million Nigerians from the age of 15 to 64, you know, abuse drugs. How, how does this statistic, which could be even more than this, strike you? Well, well uh, a consumption of uh, 
in that that drug is um, is nothing new. I guess um, in every country we have uh, such a situation. Uh, I think it is a degree uh, of uh, consumption or drug usage uh, in a country uh, that should be worrisome because there's no way you're going to avoid that really. And you have uh, local people who are involved in uh, you know drug manufacturing and production and sales. You also have international drug cartels. Uh, drug cartels that are also involved in importing drugs into the country. And uh, there's no doubt that Nigeria has become a transit uh, uh, point for um, illicit uh, drugs uh, in West Africa. In fact, uh, in Africa, especially you know, parts of uh, West Africa, have become a uh, transaction uh, 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 you know, point for uh, drugs. Uh, uh, not uh, not uh, too long ago, I think a few weeks ago, uh, Gambia witnessed its uh, largest uh, drug seizure ever, and I think uh, drugs worth about uh, eighty-four million dollars or so was discovered uh, imported into uh, uh, Gambia by drug cartels. So it is something that has, that is worrisome. About fifteen million uh, Nigerians being on drugs uh, represents um, about seven point five percent of the Nigerian population. That is a significant and alarming rate. Uh, so it is, it is worrisome, and it is a scourge because there's no way uh, you can uh, talk about um, uh, developing human capital sufficiently in the country uh, for as long as uh, a major uh, component of the population is, is on uh, drugs. Uh, it's, it's, it's dangerous for the society. Uh, so it is, it is extremely worrisome. Okay, let's talk about the, um, the government agency that, of course, is uh, left with the responsibility of uh, fighting uh, drug abuse and drug entry into Nigeria, the NDLEA. It has a new boss now, uh, former Lagos State uh, Military Administrator, Buba Marwa. But I want you to speak on, you know, the likely challenges that the NDLEA might be facing uh, with regards fighting the inflow of drugs in Nigeria. Um, or into the country, um, you know, to, of course, be circulated among these young persons. Um, what challenges do you think that the NDLA has, you know, with itself and must um, work to fix? Yes, well, I think I, I was smiling uh, ironically when um, I read uh, the statement uh, credited to Buba Marwa when he gave a warning uh, to people involved in the uh, illicit uh, drug uh, business in Nigeria. I smile because um, I remember, you know, the same time, I remember some time back when Badi, the late Badi, who was assassinated, former, I think, uh, chief of, uh, was chief of Army Staff or defense, yes. chief, of, uh, chief of defense staff, and was appointed uh, by the Jonathan administration to fight the insurrection. And I remember him making all kinds of uh, promises, uh, uh, you know, at that particular point in time. I remember also smiling that day because I just felt that he didn't know what he was talking about, or he didn't understand the challenge, or he was, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, carried away by the, uh, his new office. And of course, months later, we realized that uh, he couldn't walk the talk. Uh, you know, so and I think that this is the situation again with uh, Buba Marwa. There's no doubt that uh, the former governor of the uh, military administration of Lagos State was an action person. And that uh, he left uh, the state as administrator is, I would say, in plain colors. Uh, a lot of innovation of uh, fighting insecurity and security in the state then, you know, and all the other things that he did. And, but this is a completely different uh, ball game. First of all, it is no longer the same period uh, when he was military administrator. Uh, the Nigerian economy was relatively very buoyant. Uh, and then so they had access uh, to more money. Uh, because you find out that uh, one of the major challenges that Buba Marwa is going to have is that the NDLA is grossly, grossly underfunded. And I would say that because um, uh, I know it is true, uh, under the platform of the Justice Development and Peace Center, JDPC, uh, in Lagos, it will once organize uh, an event uh, to uh, uh, campaign against uh, drug. Uh, you know, consumption and drug use in Nigeria among youths. And uh, we expected uh, some uh, people from uh, the from secondary schools, uh, and then also officials of uh, the NDLA. And they came there and they gave us a stark uh, report of the problems that they are having. And one of the major problems is that the NDLA is grossly underfunded.
And so the 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 kind of um, zeal and the enthusiasm with which it was set up many many years back and the way it worked. Oh, I think under his first uh, chairman, police commissioner, Fidelis Sayaki Lome, I think that is God. A lot of the people, the first men, are completely, you know, demoralized. Um, uh, you know, they feel that uh, the government is uh, no longer working the top. They are not funding the organization. Without funding, there is nothing they, they can do. You know, without funding, but even the officials of the they will find themselves susceptible to, you know, this man by some of these drug barons who are exceedingly well financed. Wait. So that is the first major problem he's going to have. And so uh, he can do all the talking, but by the time reality hits him, uh, he will realize that, um, uh, you know, that this is a far bigger challenge Wait. than he had when he was military sure of the state. I'm sure there is, you know, um, allocation annually, you know, that gets to the NDLEA. You know, you've just stated that, you know, from your observation, they're poorly funded. Um, but I'm, I'm, I don't know if you would, you know, also say that there is also a corruption problem, um, along with a porous border problem that we are also dealing with here in Nigeria, that might make this this battle, you know, a lot harder for the NDLEA to fight. And also, what other bodies may need to also come into play here, besides the NDLEA? Yeah, well, I, I'm struggling to. Um, I think there's this echo at the background, so I'm trying to understand what you're saying, but I think. You still talking about uh, porous borders and about corruption that is also, you know, on in, in the agency and the rest. Yes. Uh, you, I mean, any talk of corruption in Nigeria is not a new thing. Uh, it is everything that is endemic. Let's not, uh, you know, uh, beat about the bush. And uh, so you would always find, because it's endemic, you find it everywhere. And you will find it even within the NDLA. And it's not just because it is Nigeria. Even in the best uh, of uh, countries with a uh, proper democratic uh, culture, you know, uh, richer countries of the West. You also have, once in a while, compromised security agencies, uh, you know, uh, uh, working at the behest of uh, uh, criminal organizations. So that is the degree that uh, we can actually talk about. So, uh, yes, uh, corruption will definitely play a part within uh, the NGL. And I think in the past, uh, some uh, officials of the NGL have been arrested, uh, you know, by the authorities for uh, uh, corrupt enrichment. Uh, so it is there. Then, of course, uh, the issue of a uh, uh, border, uh, the porous border, we've always had porous borders in the country. I don't know exactly what we're going to do about it, but you see, uh, the issue of drugs, um, because uh, you need, they need certain uh, quantum of drugs to be brought into the country from maybe other parts of uh, the world. Uh, they have to come in a lot of times either through the ship or through the uh, the, uh, the airlines. And so what it means is that uh, the NDMA must have infiltrators, they must have you know, an efficient espionage process that ensures that uh, you know, it's not just when you, you are at the airport that you catch people who, I mean, that it is it, you know, people who are involved in drugs, but it also needs um, a lot of um, surveillance over time, uh, you know, and serious detective work, or serious work. To be able to be one step ahead of the drug, you know, uh, traffickers, and we must also and, and once that happens, you find out that a lot of the, uh, the the interceptions that they make are usually based on information that or tips that somebody has given to them. So they must be able to increase their capacity to be able to have access to this kind of uh, uh, information, and that needs a lot of detective and surveillance, you know, work over a period of time, and then they'll be able to. Uh, 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 to get that done, regardless of uh, the porousness of the border. We know that that in itself is a worry. But then the border areas is not where, uh, you know, a lot of uh, these uh, cooking and so on coming, you know, through. Uh, if you're talking about Niger and the rest, it depends on the operational blueprints of uh, the drug cartels and how, uh, you know, uh, they do have carrying out uh, their activities. All right. All right, Mr. Achike Chude, uh, thank you so much. We, do, we wish we had more time to discuss this because there's so much on my mind, you know, for us to share about uh, tackling uh, drug abuse in Nigeria. But uh, the new NDLEA chairman seems to, you know, have a lot of zeal and drive. So let's hope that there will be, you know, lesser, you know, there'll be lesser of this issue or that this issue would be uh, reduced in society in Nigeria today. Thank you so much, Mr. Achike Chude, for your time and thoughts on The Breakfast. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. All right. Oh. Um.
the multi-billion dollar industry of drug trafficking. Yeah. Anyway. We, we unfortunately have a fair share of every type of, you know, you know, illicit activity that goes on in the world. You know, Nigeria has its, its own fair share. We're everywhere, I used to be. Good morning, anyway. We'll take a short break when we come back. We're going to, of course, do a follow-up conversation on the Nigeria Eagle. If you are eager, you know, to get on that plane and you know, uh, you know, see what Nigeria's international airline feels like, sometime in June 2021, we'll talk about the possibilities of that happening coming up next after the short break.